Hey, welcome back to Dark Knight Films and on another special ranking uh, video. This is Miracle Davis and we'll be looking at top 10 um, hypnosis scenes from TV shows. Stay tuned. We start this list with number 10, Doctor Who, season 14, serial one, part three, titled Mask of Mandragora from 1976. Okay, so in this episode, the Doctor's companion, Sarah Jane Smith, is drugged and hypnotized with a pendant by the villain in order to get her to attempt to kill the Doctor. Now, child, whom do you serve? I serve you. And the Doctor? The doctor is a sorcerer. And? The doctor is evil. And? And must be destroyed. How glad he would be to see his young companion. Number nine is Charlie's Angels, season one, episode two, titled The Saints, also from 1976. Okay, so I'm not going to spoil this one for you, but in this episode, Kelly Garrett attempts to go undercover as a rich Texan's widow, but ends up being hypnotized by a psychic medium's assistant named Terrence. And once in a trance, she reveals the truth. Once he finds out that she's a plant, he orders her to kill Jill Monroe and then kill herself. Obviously, his plan fails. Listen to me. Do you want me to call Beamish in? No, no, please don't. Do you know who Beamish really is? Uh. Matron. Yes, but now she calls herself Jill Monroe. No. Yes, it's her cover name, and she's disguised, too. If you look very carefully, you will see that she's really Beamish. No. No, there's no need to be frightened. I'm going to protect you. I can fix it so that Beamish will never bother you again. Would you like me to do that? Yes. All right, I will. I'm going to give you a phone number. The next time you see her, the moment you see her, you will call me. I will tell you exactly what to do. It's the only way that you'll ever be safe from Beamish. You will go home. You will remember nothing save what I have told you to do. Coming in at number eight is Heart to Heart, season three, episode 13, titled Heart of Diamonds from 1981. So in Heart to Heart, Jennifer Hart is secretly hypnotized by a beauty salon operator to become her own personal jewel thief. Eventually, her husband Jonathan figures out what is going on and saves her. Now, open your eyes, Jennifer. Focus on the light. It is so tranquil, so serene. You feel so peaceful as you go deeper into your dream state. Deeper and deeper. You hear nothing but the sound of my voice. Yes, Lily. When we are together, the power of my suggestions becomes stronger and stronger. Yes. When you are in your dream state, you follow my instructions. Now, you did very well with the bracelet and the necklace. When you wake, you will remember nothing about them, Jennifer. Do you understand? I understand, Lily. Good. Tonight, when it is safe, you will again enter your dream state. I have another favor I'd like you to do for me. At number seven, we have Man from Uncle, season three, episode one, titled The Her Master's Voice Affair from 1966. So, in this episode, 
Thrush is secretly running a Long Island school and brainwashing the students and teachers. When Napoleon Solo goes into the school to investigate, one of the teachers named Verity is triggered as she sleeps to attempt to kill him. After realizing what is happening, Solo triggers her himself to get answers out of her. I hope you're wrong about this. Okay, we'll find out in just a minute. All right. How do you feel? I want you to tell me what you want me to do. Come on, snap out of it. Come on. All right? What, what happened? Just as I suspected. It's very clever. You take a tune that everybody knows and give it a music box arrangement. Hmm. And you take it from there. I still can't believe that Miss Partridge could have anything to do with this. Number six is another Doctor Who, this time season eight, serial one, part one, titled Terror of the Autons from 1971. The Master takes over the Autoplastics to build the Autons. The Doctor's companion, Joe Grant, while investigating the factory, is discovered by the Master, who hypnotizes her and wipes her memory of the meeting. Who went to the radio telescope station? Myself, the Brigadier, and the Doctor. Yeah, as I thought. Curiosity is his weakness. Well, I shall have to see that it's satisfied. You will return to Unit with a negative report. You found nothing suspicious? Everything was in order? Yes, everything in order. When you leave this room, you will have no memory of meeting me, only Mr. Farrell. Only Mr. Farrell. Your instructions are already implanted. You will obey them without a further word from me. I shall obey. Good. Now, he sent her back to the unit with a booby trap, a box ostensibly containing the stolen energy unit. The doctor realizes that she has been hypnotized and disposes of the bomb. Coming in at number five, we have Dukes of Hazard, season six, episode 13, titled Heiress Daisy Duke from 1984. To collect a $20,000 reward from wealthy industrialist Carter Stewart, Boss Hogg has crooked hypnotist Professor Crandall hypnotized Daisy Duke into thinking that she is Stuart's long-lost daughter, Vivian, who happens to bear an exact resemblance to Daisy. Open your eyes. Now, we need two phrases, similar but yet different, to tell the young lady who you want her to be. And I got them, too. Listen, how's this? Jefferson Davis Hogg and J.D. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, my dear, when you hear the words Jefferson Davis Hogg, you will become Vivian Stewart. But when you hear J.D. Hogg, you will be Daisy Duke. Do you understand? Yes. Go ahead, Tester. Oh, yeah, all right, I will. Uh, Jefferson Davis Hogg. Hello, uh, what's your name? My name is Vivian Stewart. Naturally. Hmm, I see. J.D. Hall. Hello, what's your name? Santa Claus. Hmm? Boss, you know my name is Daisy Duke. What the heck are you asking me these questions for, huh? Oh, it works. It works, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, if there's anything else you want to tell her, tell her before I wake her up. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is something. Um, when you wake up, you will go home and go to sleep. And then in the morning, you will get up and come back to work at 8 a.m. sharp. Now, when I snap my fingers, you will wake up and you will remember nothing except what we told you to remember. What? Oh, hello, Daisy. Uh, say, I want to tell you, did a real good job of the inventory tonight. I did? Yeah, you sure did. And I hope you enjoyed yourself for relaxating, too. And now, it's time to go home. Good night. Good night. Oh, good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I
Run away! At number four, we have another Charlie's Angels, this time from season five, episode 14, titled Attack Angels from 1981. Julie Rogers goes to investigate John Reardon's company, but like many other women, falls victim into a scheme and being brainwashed to being his personal assassin. Now, of course, Julie's fellow angels come to her rescue. However, it is at the unexpected help of Dr. Lantry who is played by Dr. Joy's brothers. Just type the material that you hear coming through that headset over there. And the strobe light will just help you increase your speed. I do at least need points for nervousness. <laughs> Don't worry. You just type what the voice tells you to. You must allow the mind to ease. Let your hands relax on the key your body completely relax. Let the light guide your rhythm of the keys. Faster and lighter. Breathe slowly and deeply. Slowly and deeply. Hands faster and lighter. Truly, this is Mr. Reardon. You may stop now. I've stopped, sir. That's very good. Relax. You did very well, Julie. You should be happy. You may open your eyes now. But you will only listen to my voice. You will only hear my voice. Do you understand that? All right, now open the drawer. Take out the mirror. Hand it to me. Take out the candle and put it in front of the mirror. Take out the matches and light the candle. She's resisting you. I know. Now light the candle. training in hypnotic resistance. But it's all right, she's deeper now. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Now, your hands are very cold and the flame is like ice. I want you to take your right hand and hold it over that flame. You will not be hurt as long as you look at the flame and do as I say, ever deeper now. You're beyond time, beyond pain. Beyond memory. Now, Julie, tell me, why did you come here? I work for Charles Townsend and Associates. I was sent here to find out about Francine Miller. Well, that cuts it. Townsend is the slickest detective agency on the coast. She's big trouble, John. Maybe not, Robert. Julie, obviously you're not working alone on this. No, sir. There's Chris and Kelly. Now, Julie, I want you to write down those names and a list of everyone else who was involved in this investigation and everything you know about them. Yes, sir. You don't want to keep her around here. Her loyalties are to Townsend. And that's why she's valuable. Townsend thinks that she is still his operative, but she belongs to me now. I couldn't have asked for a more beautiful volunteer. And at number three, we have another heart to heart, this time from season one, episode zero. This was the pilot episode from 1979. A friend of Jonathan Hart's is killed in a motor accident just after he has left a health farm, apparently committing suicide. There was no warning of him being troubled, so the Hart's go undercover to find out what happened at the farm. But the two doctors there 
end up using a red ruby to hypnotize Jennifer and then try to use her to kill her husband. This is our conditioning room. Please, lie back and relax. What's that? It's a very large and rare ruby from India. It once belonged to a Maharaja. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful? Think of all the history locked away inside that jewel. Hundreds and hundreds of years. When you look at it, you find your mind drifting into the past. Your body begins to relax. You feel yourself beginning to float. Your body is getting heavy now. Heavy. Your eyes are getting heavy. You feel Peaceful and drowsy. Drowsy. Yes. That's right. Very drowsy. You can hardly keep your eyes open. The ruby continues to rotate, and your eyes follow it. They are getting heavier and heavier. You are going into a deep sleep. Deep. sound of my voice, but you will remain in a deep sleep. Open your eyes. Now, uh, something is troubling you, and you want to tell us about it. My name. I lied to you about my name. As we know, it isn't Janie. It's Betty Wilson. Not Betty Wilson. No. It's... Go on. Heart. Jennifer. Edward's heart. Jonathan Hart. Jonathan? My husband, Jonathan, where is he? I want to see him. And uh, so you shall see him, Mrs. Hart. Finally, at number two, we have The Avengers, Season 5, Episode 17, titled Return of the Cybernauts from 1968. Paul Beresford the brother of Clement Armstrong, the creator of the Cybernauts, blames John Steed and Emma Pill for his brother's death at the cold hands of his own creations. Now, while he is the perfect gentleman towards Mrs. Peel and gives her a wristwatch as a present, in reality, the watch is a mind control device that turns Emma into a human robot, obedient to his command. Let's put your brainchild into action now. It does work. You can see. Dear Emma, try 
trifle late. But you're forgiven. And wearing my gift, I see. Thank you. It's a very special one, as you must have guessed by now. You can hear me, Emma. Yes, I see you can. <laughs> Emma, come here. You obey me immediately. I like that. Is anything more gratifying than obedience from a beautiful woman? Beresford! The cybernaut? My new puppet. Mrs. Peel! Mrs. Peel. What's wrong? I know you're behaving in a very strange way. I've been very, very patient. No ordinary watch, Mr. Seed. It controls the will. The entire nervous system. But does it keep good time? Mm -hmm. You destroyed my brother, and now is the time for retribution. An endless retribution. Oh, I may kill you one day, if it amuses me to do so. But for the time being, you'll be like her, a puppet. Without self-will or control. A prisoner inside yourself. Obeying my every whim, my every wish. And coming in at number one, we have yet another Doctor Who, this time from season 11, serial one, part two, titled The Time Warrior from 1973. In this episode, the Doctor's companion, Sarah Jane Smith, is hypnotized and interrogated by the Santorin commander, Lynx, using a strange rod with a flashing light on the end of it. Now, ironically, he doesn't try to get her to kill the doctor like all the other villains. Oh. What? How? Sarah Jane Smith, reporter, in a machine. I did not understand it. What century? Twentieth. Well done, old girl. Absolutely on target. For once. Your civilization knows nothing of time dimensional technology. Explain. I cannot. It is a machine that belongs to someone called the Doctor. Explain the Doctor. He is a scientist. He was at the research center. He said he was very fond of Delta particles. Ah. Oh. Is he here? Yes, somewhere. I was hiding in the machine when he left. It becomes clear. Well, what did you think of that list? Did you like it? Do you disagree? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so you can become a Dark Knight fan. Until next time.